What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Nightmares Podcast, where we talk about all things horror, and we interview amazing people from the horror community, uh, whether that be talking about movies, music, pop culture, comic books, and in this case, uh, making some awesome, awesome fucking masks. Uh, we have an awesome dynamic duo, duo here today. We have uh, Nikki and Billy. Um, if you would be so kind to introduce both of yourselves and uh, tell us um, all about your business. Do a little quick intro. I'm Billy. This is Nikki. Yeah. Um, our business, we basically we make masks. We make tumblers. We stick in the kind of the horror genre because that's our jam. Um, we make all kinds of pop culture, Jason mask. We also make different types of horror tumblers based upon like different movies that have come out. Um, I, we also dabble into some other things like we make some eyeballs and like weird stuff you know for halloween stuff <laughs> or for whatever yeah very nice and what is it what is the name of that that business because i forgot to mention it at the at the beginning i wanted you to get get the opportunity yeah. to introduce yourself that way um night terror studio very nice very nice and hailing from the sunshine state of uh, florida um, uh, so which is fantastic. Hey, thank you so much for, for being on the nightmares podcast. Um, and I can see you got a lot of awesome shit right behind you. The, um, uh, the, um, uh, that's, that's a lot of cool stuff right there. The, um, so, um, uh, so, um, I, I know that you, this is your first time being here. So, uh, we, we, we like to like to get down and, and really get into the history of, of where this crazy adventure started for both of you. Um, and then, uh, and then we go from there. So one of my favorite questions to ask is, um uh, where did horror begin in your life um uh, you know where did it start um and then and then when did uh, this adventure of making really cool masks together uh come into the fold um in general for me horror started when i was young my parents used to like make me watch horror movies all the time and i used to be deathly afraid and have nightmares the rest of my whole life like my childhood <laughs> <laughs> and then as I got older, I really liked it. I guess it was like, you know, put the fear in and then like, you like it. <laughs> but um, nice. that was for me personally when I was growing up. Yeah, me, it was, I, I don't know, I've always been into it. I remember, uh, I think the first movie I watched when it was House it was the first movie I think I really seen that was horror. And I think it was on Cinemax. Might have been on Cinemax. I remember watching it. I was supposed to be in bed, but I, was, I, was <laughs> I never got scared or got nightmares or anything like that. I just was real intrigued with it. And I always been, especially a lot of it I caught on Cinemax. And so I was able to, you know, start whatever and ranting them and doing whatever. And then we had, I had a friend I'd stay over at. And his mom would let him rant whatever the hell he wanted. And so we'd go in there and rant stuff, face to death, trace to death. We would just, Whatever we wanted, it was always horror stuff, constant. There's also like a good like age difference between me and him, like an eight year age difference. So, like when I was a kid, the movies that I was watching coming out were like Chucky. Do you know what I'm saying? That came out in the air. So he's definitely got like a good like we've he's introduced me to a lot of older horror that I didn't watch when I was growing up. The um uh, from the golden age of horror, the the eighties, the um uh, so um. So, so the question I have for you too is, you know, is when did you, you know, cause a lot of people are fans of horror, you know, but uh, only so many get into creative endeavors of making things that are for the horror community. So I'm curious when that like whole adventure started and maybe when both of your paths crossed and when you became partners in crime. Um, we were already like together and doing stuff to be honest with you. It's not a really exciting story. We have children <laughs> that wanted to be um, well, adopt my daughter. She wanted to be Jason, and she was like, oh, "Well, it, we're, actually, it started with us decorating, like doing Halloween decorating. Besides, you know, we do stuff. We just like having a horror theme thing, doing things. We have it in our house. We go all out, and start decorating and each year. It would just be more and more. And what really started happening is once you uh, that stuff gets expensive, making that stuff. I mean, uh, not making it, but buying it. And if you know how to do some of that stuff, which I know how to make some of that stuff, I know how to lots of things I've done in my past, where I've worked with electrical, 
engines. I'm just mechanically inclined that I could build these props. I could, you know what I mean? And that's kind of where it started turning into where I started making these things. Especially like I'm seeing made, how they're made. And cheap, some of them are cheaply made. Yeah, like we made um, like pillars for our, we have like a cemetery like type of haunted house thing going on. So uh, we got, we made the fencing and the pillars and we made the pillars out of styrofoam and I painted them. And then we put like pumpkin lights on them. And then uh, we made uh, like these like little fire things. We made spider sacks. Yeah, we just start making our own stuff. And I was kind of always on the sidelines here making the, the mask. And, and then I learned how to play with latex. So I started latexing, um, what do you call those? Uh, the 12 foot skeleton. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I started latexing the 12 foot skeletons to make them look like they're fleshy and like coming off the flesh. Nice. You know, and paint. Then the mask thing was our daughter. She wanted to be a uh, Jason for Halloween. Well, they don't really make horror costumes for children. Like, that's not a thing. I mean, not like that. Not like that. Not like, like the big guys, like Jason, Freddy. Like, they don't make them for, like, toddlers. She was a toddler. She <laughs> wanted to Jason a toddler. <laughs> She's seen everything about it, but when it came time to do whatever, she didn't want... Because I explained to her that if she was going to be part seven, he's got that mask, he's got that piece of that mask blown out that he might have to put some makeup on there and make it cosmetically look, you know, so it looks right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not necessarily for her to wear a mask or anything, but maybe we could make it cosmetically do something. She didn't want that. So I basically, essentially, the first mask was I had to make a part seven that wasn't really technically a part seven because the mask looked blown out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it had a look, she wanted to look like that without the mask, without the piece missing on the mask because she didn't want to wear the makeup. And then our second mask ever was she wanted to be NES Jason. <laughs> so we, got, <laughs> we got work boots. I spray painted them like the turquoise blue. We made her like the weapon, spray painted that, the turquoise blue and purple, got her like a headgear, and then made her the NES. We make our own straps, so we made the purple straps on it. And then my son wanted to be, what was he, Tiger? He wanted to be. Ben, Bendy. No, he was Sammy. The year she was Bendy. He was she, Bendy. The other but year. he never used her mask. Yeah, he used the Bendy mask, and no. then he, he made a Sammy. Oh, Bendy okay. and the Ink Machine, I don't know if you know that, that video game. Yeah, I played it. Pretty good game. Yeah, yeah. We, we made a, I made him a mask that was a Jason mask that was Bendy, and then the following year I made him one that was Sammy. And then we made the weapon and like painted, got him like yellow jeans, painted them with the ink stains. <laughs> so what really happened with this, like like why we even opened it up as a business, was to be honest with you, me and him have regular jobs. Like this is not our only thing that we do. And during during the time when COVID came out, I was put on a, a leave of app, a, like a, like you had a choice to do it leave or stay with a company and not make any money. So I took the leave. <laughs> and yeah, that sounds about leave, right. I had time to make the masks and post them on Etsy and well, see. We had already team. had quite a bit of masks made. Mm -hmm. And I told her put, we were doing it for fun. Put them on the shop then, because you had some other stuff you had the shop started. I had a shop. I had the shop started prior because I was just selling kind of like odds and ends stuff. Like the the first sale of Night Terror Studio was um, there was a porcelain. I used my porcelain doll from Goodwill mm -hmm. and repurposed it. Oh, so nice. I made the first doll ever was a porcelain doll that looked like Pennywise. Oh, but then, that's awesome. So and then it kind of evolved and you know and what was the. What was the biggest surprise, uh, you know, for you with the business? You know, I always love asking that is, you know, what was the biggest uh, shock with, with the business? Uh, was it that it took off or or is it just that, um, uh, you know, you were able to sustain it? I mean, the first year was it was the way it took off, like especially during Halloween time. We were not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> not ready no. for it at all. It took off. It took <laughs> off as soon as she started. Because I told her to throw the mask up there. Because I was making them here and there. Because I wanted them. I like them. I want them. And every time I make one, it goes on my wall. And if I put it, if it goes for sale, I'll show that. But the one I first made does not go for sale. I keep that mask. So 
So all the masks you see on the wall are all the ones they made. They're our first. This is the first one. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. I love that. On the, the thing, and it was... <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think it, I think she was a little shocked because it was just kind of like bam, 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 bam. Everybody just kept ordering the mask, and like she said, when Halloween come coming around, like or just pulls well, like September to October, got our ass painted. The so, um, uh, you know, as they say, it's a good problem to have. The um, uh, that uh, the old adage of of being of uh, being busy. It's it's super cool though that you keep all the prototypes. That you like as you design this stuff, you're like you're like I'm just gonna keep this, you know, keep the original on there. Um uh, and, and you know and then you know and obviously then we'll sell the copies of it which is really cool. We mainly like to keep it as like a reference, like just to make sure that we're getting it right every time, you know. Not uh, well, that as well too. Nice, nice. What have been some of your popular and most popular ones? Um, uh, that that uh, that went out. This year is part six. Uh, they like they can't get enough. Yeah, so part, part six, six has been crazy. Verses and part six. Really? Part six, then verses, I'd say second. As far as Jason masks go. As far as just straight Friday the 13th, Jason. Pop culture one kind of ones. They always bounce around. Yeah, like this year we sold a couple of the Hellraiser ones because those are pretty cool. And then we sold, um, what is it, a Joker one. Uh, the the Leatherface one, the Pretty Woman. Those sell pretty well. Um, nice. They, they come in waves. They come in waves. Like the pop culture ones, we don't get as, like, they're not, it's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, we get a few. It's the regular Jason masks that sell the most. Of. So, part eights, part sevens, part sixes, part threes, part fours. <laughs> gotcha. What do you use to uh build the mask? Like, do you 3D print your masks or do you get like blank templates and just kind of like, you know, customize them from there? Yeah. We buy blanks. We get the blank templates and we do that. I know what I'm going to eventually do is going to start getting a, I've been looking into it for the, do your own uh, vacuum form and create those you know, different molds and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. there are blank templates. And then I go from there between, uh, they get dremeled. But we took a while to get like the perfect templates. Like we went through a couple of companies uh, before we found one where we got it just right. Like we had to make them send them out because we don't have, ours aren't thick. They're very, they're very sturdy. Like they're not, they're, they're, they're not like overly flexible, but they're like sturdy and thick. Like they're, cause some of the ones that you get from over, overseas, they're, they're almost like paper. Like you could legitimately fold them into a circle and put them in your back pocket. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that takes some serious craftsmanship right there. That's that, that's actually really cool. It's it's cool that 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 you're making. And, and and I mean and also too is I mean it may be surprising to you guys, but it's not surprising to me. I mean people want stuff that's of quality. They um, especially in the horror community. Like you know the horror community can get very particular, especially when it comes to their requests. When it comes to Friday the Thirteenth, they like they want some good quality stuff, and 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 it's it's really cool that there's a company like yours out there actually making it. Yeah, and then like when we paint the mask and stuff like that too, we um like for me, I go on the internet and I actually look up the movies, the actual physical movie, and try to reference those for the paint jobs. And like the scratches and the try to reference, like try to get them pretty. I don't like to say replica because then people will start nitpicking you completely. But you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no. Replica. No, you have the scratch, like right above the eye to the left, you know? And the, the problem is when you watch these movies and you, you take like still <clears throat> screenshots of the movies, the mask isn't always the same throughout the movie. So I mean, like it just depends on which part of the movie you're yeah, they they would have to have multiple masks on set just in case something happened to one of them. I mean, you got Jason doing stunts and stuff like that, getting hit with yeah. weapons. So if one breaks, there needs to be a replacement. So you can't get into the nitty gritty details of <laughs> every minor scratch, a piece of dirt or speckle of whatever you find, a leaf or blood. Just yeah, it it's almost impossible to 100% replicate that. Or if you were going to do that, you'd spend a year making one mask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So. Well, you you think think that's you think like people would think like that, but they don't. We get nip. Some people are very nitpicky. They're like, oh no, I need it 
the scratch above the eye. And I'm like, okay, whatever you want, man. <laughs> scratch above the eye, you got it. You're I mean, if I was going to say, if that's the case, take a knife, add a little scratch yourself, and won't kill you. <laughs> there you go, some American ingenuity. And you're also critiquing a series that you could shoot about a thousand holes into plot wise. It's a it, it's a series that lasts 15 years, but all of it is in the 80s. Um, uh, right. fig- figure that out. The um, uh, I challenge anybody to figure that that equation out. The um, uh, but so you know, so you kind of dived into it a little bit, but um, but what exactly from the partnership between the two of you is the process? Do uh, Billy, do you make them and then Nikki, you paint them, or how does it? Or you kind of individually work? You know, how does the whole you know, process from start to finish actually go within your partnership or is it kind of just whatever, you know, happens or whoever's available or, you know, is it just, it's just chaos. <laughs> Children. Um, one of mine stands a mat. He like basically scrubs the mask for us. Cause you have to scrub the sheen off all the mask. His uh, job is a dollar mask. Nice. That's one way to make it work. I can't get him. That. It's not, it's not, he's not, we're trying to get the kids kind of involved so like in case like you know they this does take off and does become something they can they can take it and do it you know what i'm saying like and enjoy it like we're enjoying it but i don't the work workmanship is not <laughs> yeah but i uh like i said i i stand them um i i dremel them i will he'll stand them if it's masks that need to be drawn out like like there's like drawn out like things on the mask. I draw everything out, so I draw. Out, oh, like, sometimes I draw. Sometimes he'll draw them out. It just depends on what it is. Yeah, it depends on what it if is. If it's the pop culture ones, generally I draw those. Um. Then I'll dremel them. I cut them. I'll primer them. I'll paint the base. And then I get the base. And, and then, then she gets it. I do all the detailed painting. On this. And then I get it. And I clear coat it. And then either her or me sign them, and then straps get put on them, and then they get bagged, and then... And then I do, like, the bagging and the evidence tape, and I do all the, like... I pretty much take care of anything that's, like, actually on the shop. If you're contacting the shop, most likely, like, 95% you're contacting me. So I generally, like, deal with any questions on the shop. I do all the shipping, um, anything that's, like, the extras that we put in the the bags to ship out so like we give like like a little bag with like screws and candy and then um you get like a th- i can write all- everybody's thank you cards so oh, that's 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 so that's that's really really cool that's that's super nice you know so i i caught a little bit of billy's background you know what's you know engineering and mechanics and things of that nature so nikki do you have a you know an art background or did you go to school for art or is that kind of always been in your life you know I was, you know, I was like uh, hearing a little bit about the, about that portion. Um, I generally always liked art, so I always used to like to draw and like paint and and do like pictures and so that's kind of like my jam. And I generally like I'm I critique myself really hard sometimes. Sometimes I get like really. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Any artist does. <laughs> Like you start drawing something, you're like, oh, this just isn't it, you know? <laughs> like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm probably the worst. <laughs> I'm probably the worst with that. But generally, like, I, I like to come up with different ideas. I used to like to do a lot of arts and crafts projects and projects in general. I do all my kids' projects too, because I'm just that person. I love being at the craft store, apparently. <laughs> nice. Very, very cool. Very cool. That's, that's fantastic. The, um, so, uh, um, so I'm curious cause obviously, you know, you're getting requests and you know, do you guys do, um, uh, you know, um, custom work or like do special requests? And if you do, um, what's the craziest request that you've ever gotten? Cause I love to hear those stories. And I know Zach would love to hear about some crazy, uh, you know, Friday, you know, uh, Friday stories as well on some crazy requests you might've gotten. Um, generally, most of the requests we've gotten have been pretty good ones. Okay. There have been a few wild ones. Like, one guy just hit me up recently, which I changed his order because there was no way. He was like, I want a mask. And I want burlap on it like your part two. But then I want nails in it like your Hellraiser mask. But then I want it cut out certain sections and then i want it like he just kept adding like all this stuff from like all the masks that are semi like like 
different like attributes on it and he just wanted all in one mask. <laughs> so he wanted the Frankenstein Jason mask or something? I I, I, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and then so I messaged him back, I was like, that's gonna look horrible. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you have no I, taste. I was making sense. You couldn't put together in your head how that, that would even look right. I I generally was like, that's gonna look horrible. I I've learned that, you know, when I first started, um, I used to take orders that didn't sound good and try to make them work. And then like, it just didn't, they didn't turn out good. The customer didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? And I knew it wasn't gonna turn, you know, while I was making, I was like, this is the best. So I've learned over time that if I think it's not good, I'm just gonna say no. But That's what fair. And thing is I ended up talking him into, which is what's gonna come up soon, is we're doing a Jason mask that I did it where it's cut out with um, it's like toxic. Like, so it has all the toxic drips on it, but then it has the, the you, know, you ever guys ever seen the mask have like the skull, like half of the skull on the bottom? I, I, I vaguely. Kind of like the Berserker. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, that, yeah, 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 that, that, nice, nice, I love it, I love it. So we're gonna take that and put it underneath the mask. So it's oh, nice. like, through. See, like, it is, it's not finished, so do not judge my work. No, 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 no. you're good. No, see? <laughs> Oh, very nice. I could see that working yeah, oh, out I very see that well. Very well. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. No, absolutely. One hundred ten percent. They um, that, that works. Yeah, that definitely works. They um, uh, that that's awesome. They um, uh, so I yeah, I love it when like you know people have people that aren't typically you know like creative, but I guess they have a big imagination. But there's a difference between it. That's when you know there's a difference between imagination and creativity. Like, creativity is, like, the practicality of, of imagination. And, like, when people just, like, let, when, uh, let their imagination run wild, sometimes it looks like a dumpster fire. Um, uh, so so I, I commend you for being strong enough to be like, uh, no, no, we're, we're, no, we're not, no, no, we're not going to do that. And to be honest with you, we don't get it really a lot on the mask. I The dumpster fires are the, the tumblers. <laughs> yeah. Those are the dumpster fire ones. Oh, then we have like, to talk about it. The um, uh, then we're gonna talk about some. See, see, see that's that's called a, a conversational trap. The uh, you just <laughs> fell in, so now we're gonna now we're, now we're gonna talk about some fun stories. Are the, people are just so wild on what they want on a cup, and like it has to look good. It has to have some kind of uniform. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So be nice. Like nobody wants. Like so they're like, okay, what well, I'm thinking. Is let's put leather. <laughs> that, see that's so, so the, right there. When they say that, then then like it's it's kind of gonna be it's, it's gonna be a shit show. Then <laughs> so like let me put leather face on the cup. I said okay, we can do leather face. I said what what else do you want want around the cup? Do you want it just leather face themed or no? I want goo on it, and then I want serial killers on it, and then but we want I want to focus on Gacy, but I want all the other ones on it. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> why is my other face on it? Like, and why is there goo on it? Like, is it blood? No, like, like green goo. The, What's happening? I have <laughs> questions. Like, I, I like I have questions. Like, <laughs> like have you never like watched Sesame Street? Like, one of these things is not like the other. Oh my god. They all uh, <laughs> like you do. Like you, you can't. No, no. <laughs> just no. The um yeah. uh, so I mean oh yeah we we had a we had uh, two ladies from Arizona who run a horror um gluten free bakery and they were telling us all about their requests and everything else they've had like alien cakes they've had like a guy who a doctor's office who wanted a cake of a spleen that you can open up and the stuff comes out of it and everything else so so when I I get that so like what what else what what have other been some other requests uh, that were kind of uh, wild for mask wise. Taking a Jason mask and making it Michael Myers. That's an interesting one. I uh, I really it's because his his I, face. I've seen a guy do it on uh, YouTube and it just doesn't look it right. Don't, it don't sit right. Like trying to make it because it has to have that Schaffner look. Yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 that look and it, it you could do like. Like whether maybe if you went with a maybe like the newer ver like the Halloween ends and kills like the, the variation of whatever you could maybe do the job of like the burnt or like Rob Zombie Halloween you could do 
like the, the cut that that cold bitter look but you can never actually get the, the look of what the myers mask looks like on the hockey mask it, it just it's, it doesn't it's, look right. It don't look right. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like, weird. The closest thing I can think of is maybe give the Jason mask a wig, and but that would just look ridiculous. I I, I don't know what you would do with that. Like it's, it's it's weird. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's weird. You and the thing is, is like we the whole idea is what we think is cool is it's like a flip over like a combination of Jason meets something, especially when it comes to making any of the pop culture. Like, it's Jason meets Leatherface. We still kind of want it to look like a Jason to look mask. like a, a hockey mask. But, but you could, like, look at it and be like, oh, that's Leatherface. But it's Jason. You yeah. know? Yeah, no, like, absolutely. What's the weirdest one of that that you've ever gotten? Like, uh, blank meets Jason. Like, what was the weird? What was the strangest one or that you ever got from that? Strangest one? Some of them are pretty cool. I mean, oh wait, how about that one? I don't know why this. The Superman this has, Spawn one. Yeah, this one was bad. Uh, can I get? I want wanted the pro mask. But he wanted was bad. I think it probably could have made it work somehow but that's and make wanted. it look cool. But that's not. He he refused. He he did not like. He didn't want any coolness in his mask whatsoever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he thought, okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait, and then he got mad and didn't like the mask and actually gave me two stars. No, it wasn't. It. His friend didn't like it. He yeah. got it for a friend. He liked it, but apparently, because he thought, it. oh, my friend's going to love this, and apparently his friend hated it. It was, uh, I know that you guys are, like, wanting to know what it is. I okay, do. So I really was, do. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm leaning in like this. I'm <laughs> like, I want to know. He wanted a crow mask. So we make a crow mask. It looks like the crow. It has, like, the mouth, and then it has, like, a crow in the middle, and then it has eyes that go down. And it looks just like the crow. But then, which, the crow mask is not a bad mask. That That's a fine mask. But then he wanted the Superman symbol on one cheek of the crow. And he wanted the spawn symbol on the other cheek of the crow. Okay. That's, that is a very weird combination. Why? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, like, that's what I would, I would, I would but, but, but sir, but why? But, 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 but why? Then I would, I, I, and then I was like, okay. Then I was just trying to make it work at that point, and I was like, well, can I do the Superman symbol in black? Because the whole mask is black and white, and the spawn symbol is generally black, which is green eyes. So I was like, can I just do the Superman symbol in black? So it's just all black and white. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm yeah. Like, no, it has to be in red. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, Okie dokie, sir. They um, uh, will. Uh... We'll give it a shot. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see what happens. The um, so on top of everything, he wanted the soup. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> then afterwards, do it. I get it. The a okay. Because I generally, I will ask you if you do something custom with me. I will give you some photos before I finish it off. And I'll be like, Are you a okay with it? Do you want to change anything? Is there anything else that we that you need me to do or whatever? And he a okayed it. We clear coded it. We sent it off, and then he gave me a two star review and said his friend hated it. What an asshole! <laughs> Jesus Christ! They, I know you can't say anything, but I'll say it. Like you know, what an asshole! Yeah, that's they, a uh, dick uh, move. Like, the, uh, come on! Yeah, that, oh that's my, you're the one who requested it. He told me about it. Okay. So when that's why I said after that incident, to be honest with you, that was the incident there that I was like, if I don't think it's gonna look good, no, it's yeah, gonna it, be a no. Oh, and then no. You know what I would have done too? I don't know if you guys are Star Wars fans. I would have sent him. I would, there's a great meme um, of literally of Anakin, and, and I would have sent him the meme of like, wait a minute, this whole operation was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> How can you get mad at me? <laughs> this was your idea. <laughs> they oh my oh my god, that's it's just just ri ridiculous that they you know um, that, that 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 happened. So um uh, you know th that's really really cool. The um you know and is um. Was there any reason to, you know, it's kind of funny. Like, are you guys planning on doing any kind of expansion to other people? Or, you know, or it sounds like you guys are primarily staying within Jason. You really don't have a need to to, to break the mold into any other horror icons. I mean, yeah, you do it on, on and off. But primarily, though, you're you're the Jason mask. Um, uh, you know, is it just that people have just requested it? Or is it because that you guys really, really like it and you you want to stick in that little niche? 
Just like both, I guess. Both. I mean, like, well, I'll bend. I do, like I said, I do also do tumblers, and that those I generally venture off into other series. There's those not just Friday the 13th. No, I do the yeah. act. I do. Um, I've done The Exorcist. I've done Killer Clowns. I've done Jaws. I've done Gremlins. I've done Ghoulies. I've done Critters. I've done um, that. I don't stick in one genre. The cups are legitimately extra. Like I do Leatherface. I've done Friday the Thirteenth, Myers, uh, uh, Beetlejuice. Nice. You nice. name it, I probably touched it. Pumpkinhead, like. <laughs> nice, nice. So, so have you? So, have you, have you both had an opportunity to? Um, you know, I, we we still have a little bit to learn about the uh, the Florida scene, the Florida horror scene. Um, but have you had an opportunity to do any cons yet, or um, or you know, get out to the public and and kind of go and meet people and you know and do you know kind of public events or. Um, anything like that? Um, uh, you know, I was just getting curious because because the horror community is is often a great community. They're very very friendly and welcoming. So I'm just curious about your interaction and reaction from the horror community. We've never done any cons yet. Yeah, we're wanting to. We're wanting I mean, to. we went into um, a consignment with a store in Jersey for a little bit, and that didn't pan out. <laughs> well, that happens. That happens. <laughs> Because it wasn't selling or anything, our stuff wasn't selling. It was just uh, we didn't get our money for our yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was just the guy that ran the <laughs> shop who was a uh... yeah. He like was selling our stuff, but we didn't get our money for our stuff. And I knew he was selling it because people that were buying from his shop were tagging us. Yeah, going on Instagram and, and tagging us. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. So you know, so I'm curious. The um, so um, you know, obviously this is kind of a niche, and and you're really. Um, you know, servicing the horror community. Um, uh, you know, do you guys have friends who do creative things or horror or horror fans? Um, uh, the um, what are, you know, what are, what are your uh, what do your friends and families think when they walk into your house and they see the whole the whole wall right behind you? Um, uh, you know, oh, I, I was always curious about that. Our whole house is horror, legitimately, from when you nice. walk into the front door to the bathrooms. Like our toilet is a J- part seven Jason. <laughs> That sounds awesome. That because that is awesome. It doesn't sound awesome. It is awesome. We definitely our whole house, like I said, is for um, generally like when my kids' friends come over, they don't like our house. They our family, our friends are <laughs> our family and friends are cool with it. They don't yeah. have because they all don't. They're not as super into horror like we are, but they're into it. They watch it from time to time. I mean, we have a couple of friends that are like really into it. Um, that will watch whatever, but generally, like like I said, our our we we collect like everyone else collects too. We collect collectibles. You walk in our house, you see all our collectibles. Come in, they're all on the, the walls. We collect like you know, signatures, just like everyone else. <laughs> Very nice. That that that's. We're- part of the horror community You're we don't fans. just do this we're fans you know what i love that too you know i love i love that when you know when people you know um uh, you know came in you know and do something creative with that so um i see that you guys have you know have had some de- a pretty good success on um slasher i don't know if you know too we've had um uh, we've had damon on the podcast now twice um uh, the um uh, the guy from slash he's awesome how's the response been on on slasher um, uh, it's been positive for us. We, we, we love it. We've met so many people on, on Slasher, but I'm, I'm curious how the online horror community has kind of, uh, you know, reacted to you. Oh, that's, it, he's great. It, it, he keeps, uh, he very seldom has any issues with, with any nonsense that you might see on Facebook or Instagram or some of these other social media sites. It's, it's awesome. He's created a good, uh, community so far. It's been been awesome. I don't he, know. he generally I, runs the slasher. I don't really. I have problems using slasher on my phone for whatever reason. It just doesn't want to live. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Yeah. That sucks. The um, uh, that, that that sucks a lot. The um, uh, the uh, well, you know, and and um, you know, I know that you know, you know, how did you meet Corey, um, uh, Mr. Poltergeist OD? Because I I got to hear about that. I'm curious. Oh, I've met him. I, I met him through uh, slasher. And uh, I, I knew of his music before that, 
and then I see him he was on Slasher, and then it's just through interaction on Slasher and and just, you know here and there talking. So you know, we, we post stuff, and then I wanted to make him a mask. I thought it'd be awesome to make him a mask, and then I made him a mask. But I was always plus I'm always trying to spread his uh, anybody that doesn't know of his music that likes that kind of stuff. Most most some people I associate with they like that, so I'm always telling them, hey, and they like them and everything. That's why I still I made the comment. He should be uh, should be bigger. Oh, dude, he should be way bigger. He needs to come to the states. We 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 bust his balls all the time about come coming to the states and leaving his uh the the great white north for a little bit and everything else, so he can come down and and hang out and and meet all all the people that uh, that really appreciate him. And Zach is not a hip hop fan at all, and he actually really likes likes his music. I like it. <laughs> they, oh um, my, uh, you know, they coming from coming from the rock and roll and metal, you know, world and everything else, just just very. Um, uh, you know, very much a purist in that in that regard. So, you know, so sex. Uh, um, uh, do you have any uh, how many questions uh, for uh, for our guests? Uh, one actually. So, I've always wondered. Uh, so, predator masks. Would that be something you would be interested in making, like custom themed predator masks? Because custom Jason masks, like I I see that kind of often, like depending on where you look. But nobody, nobody does predator masks, and I am a di- I'm a diehard Friday the Thirteenth fan and a diehard Predator fan. One ma- one set of masks is way easier to get than the other. So uh, yeah. I'm just wondering, is like that, that's something you might be interested in branching out to? Maybe at some point, maybe not in the immediate future, but you know, just at some point. I would I wouldn't say no. We don't ever say no. No, I wouldn't say no. Unless- we, we just say your idea sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not your idea, other yeah. people's ideas. Sometimes, but we don't ever say no to like trying new things. Okay. We'll always try you new. Know, if you got if anybody has an idea, we love working on idea. So we would we would never say anything like no to anything that's like would be cool that we could work together and find a pretty cool idea for. Nice, nice. So, are there are, are there any um uh, you know any things that you haven't done yet that you really would love to do mask wise, um you know from other movies and other you know pop culture things? Maybe not necessarily even in horror, but like some really cool shit that you're like you're like man, if I just get a request to do this, you know I I, I would be really on top of this all day, and, um or anything maybe you have planned for the future to do. If we have an idea, we make it. I promise you. Okay, so have, you don't have to say. We weren't so busy this Halloween season. I legitimately have a stack of masks right here to paint that are things that we wanted to make that we started like started off the process. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some other ones that I want to make that that not necessarily I would say they're challenging masks. Like I wanted to make a Necronomica mask. I did it. Um, Respect. Uh, Two Face from you know Two Face from Batman. I wanted to do Bane, but I want to do more of like an older school Bane. Which we did because books. we did a Bane um, um, already. There was but... just things, certain things I want. And then, uh. And then we let our kids too. Like, we made a mask that, like, a clown gremlin. That's something our son came up with. Yeah. Like, the idea. And then I put it to life. Like, gave me a somewhat idea. And then I was like, oh, this would be cool. Or let's add this. Or. Let's do this. It was the first Max that we actually started adding clown noses to. Hmm. So. Nice. Yeah, nice. like I'm working on Sweet Tooth one from Twisted Metal. Nice. Nice. What? They, uh, I what? know I know what I'm ordering. Yeah. They, um, uh... <laughs> it, needs, it needs things for it to be complete because if you look at it the way it is now, it's kind of like, and I have to get all this stuff out and put it on the mask so you can see it. <laughs> The judgment, the judgment's real. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it always is, you know, and like, and, and that's, and like, twisted metal is so, like, you know, Zach and I have talked about this. It was it, uh, like instrumental when we were growing up. I mean, like, that was a video game that, like, that was the first time I ever ever heard uh, Rob Zombie um, on that game. So, like, I mean, that was my introduction to Rob Zombie. The uh, so, I mean, like, that was that, that was an instrumental game in my childhood. So, um, yeah, uh, um, 
But it, uh, send me a message as soon as you're done. Oh um, my, uh, the because uh, I think Zach, both Zach and I will probably buy it. And it'll, and honestly, too is I don't know if you can see our little. We have little display cases out here. We'll put it in one of the display cases, so it'll always be behind us um, in the podcasts. The because we have, I, I'm starting to replace it with people that we meet. Um, I want to put their stuff in the display case. Um, uh, you know, and, and start, uh, you know, really, you know, I can talk to the pieces. I don't know if you like, yeah, you can kind of see it and everything else. Um, we'll show you a little bit afterwards, but there's a, a whole bunch of display cases all around. It's really cool. Um, you know, I, I had one last question, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into, uh, the, the question, of the podcast, but slightly personal, but you know, you guys have kids, you know, how does it feel to, uh, you know, kind of be developing the next generation of, horror fans you know because we we bring this up a lot on on um on different interviews about you know culture has kind of been kind of on the rocks to say the least and horror seems to be sometimes the last line of defense um of you know of really you know having something to say and being free uh a horror is very creatively free and uh, people can just do whatever and the fans will love it so i'm i'm curious you know what it's like to um to be kind of passing the baton to the next generation and and what that feels like i mean our kids are pretty awesome so like in general <laughs> I, fair I, enough they're pretty awesome guys but um like they like horror they like going to the like we've been we have not personally been in a convention like to sell but we've been to conventions okay. so they like you know, going to the conventions, they enjoy meeting the, the, you know, the people like my son met Vincent, who played, you know, Andy from Chucky. We got him the photo, and he got like the signature, and he was super stoked about it. We go to Krampus Fest. That's what we do in Christmas time. We don't do no Santa Claus. We do Krampus. Nice. <laughs> um, we um, we just and both my kids love like uh, they both listen to like metal music and like rock music that's what i listen to so like generally like and my husband listens to it too so generally like that is like the thing so i think it kind of like almost correlates itself you know what i'm saying like metal music rock or like my kids are my kids are pretty straight up they're gonna be good nice for the next nice nice and it's it's pretty cool though the in the, in the horror community aren't they fantastic they um uh you know like we, we we brag about the horror community all the time and and they often seem to be the the the, the friendliest nicest people which is ironic because they like the the most deplorable like awful <laughs> shit that like to, to do to another human being but they end up being the nicest sweetest most engaging people around so you know I, and i imagine your experience was no different especially with your kids you know, now coming into the fold. So, you know, I, 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 I'm assuming that that's been your experience just the same. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's our kids, like I said, our kids enjoy it. We, and then we always, like I said, we were trying, we always try to get them involved. We like to them to be involved in it as well, you know, and they like, my daughter's favorite thing is, you know, the horror stuff in general. Like she like for like her birthday, wanted a crouchy shirt spirit. She's excited about the new spirit movie that's coming out. Nice. Nice. That's that's, yeah. that's awesome. That's that that's awesome. That's awesome. The uh, so um so what so what we do um uh, at the end of of every podcast is uh, we ask a question of the podcast which I never pre plan I just make it up as we go um, but I think this one is appropriate and it should be pretty simple um, in our tradition we always let the guests go first um, but if they uh, but if they uh, want to think about it for a little bit longer they can go ahead and pass um, and then we can come around the horn um, but you know what no one has passed yet um, no pressure. Um, but, uh, you know, just the fact of the podcast, no one's passed yet. Um, uh, so what is your, um, all time favorite horror mask? Zach's going to have to think about that one for, for a bit. And he's lucky he's going last. Like one I make or just one? No, no, no. For the, for the movies, the, um, uh, from, from, uh, from a horror movie, um, what is the, your favorite, um, uh, a favorite a horror movie mask that you've ever seen? I have no, my favorite, uh, Leatherface Pretty Woman. That is my favorite. Mask. <laughs> it's a classic. I don't know why. I just love it. Might be because I'm a girl. I don't know, but it's my jam. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. And how about you, Billy? 
I mean, I like that mask too. But, <laughs> I, but uh, uh, I have to say that I'm kind of, I kind of, I, I have it too. The Doctor Decker mask from uh, my Nightbreed. Okay, nice, nice, I, I, nice. That, that is actually a that's a solid choice. That yeah, is. A, I, I say. I mean, there's not various ones, but I. She picked the pretty woman one, so. <laughs> she took the good one. I say like we're pretty much well on the same page with a lot of the stuff, like what we like. We generally both like the same stuff. Like our favorite, like creature feature, like our creature is pumpkin head. Like that is our jam. Of course, of course. So yeah. like we. Yeah. And the pumpkin head mask ain't that. Ain't that great. I no. get it. I get it. I, the um, uh, but it's still enjoyable. Uh, um, itself. Uh, Zach, um, uh, uh, it is your turn, sir. Go ahead. Terra mask from Splatterhouse. Nice, nice. I dig it. The um, uh, so um, the I I got it. You know, and, and it's it's cliche, but it's something that I, I just always come back to me is um uh, is Jason's mask from uh, Freddy vs Jason. I always remember it. They, um, I always remember it, I, and I don't know why it just came to mind. Like, and, and I, I just, I guess I have a very special place in, the, in my heart for that movie. Um, I think it's hilarious. Um, it's, 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 it's the acting is terrible in it, but it is, it's such an iconic and badass movie that I absolutely love. The, um, my, so, um, my, there's something about that is just so, it's just so striking. The um and I just have I, I remember the first time I saw it I just had a striking memory of of literally him folding up the the mattress and and everything else and um uh, it just it just such a, a such a good one and a good runner up would probably be uh, um Jason X um uh, the futuristic one is pretty pretty dope I like it the uh, over yeah over Jason yeah over Jason that, is that, badass yeah over Jason's pretty badass man the uh, you can't go wrong with that the um uh, so um so all right wonderful well hey. Oh um, uh, th- thank you both so much for for hopping on uh, on the, the podcast. This is your opportunity to let the good people know where they can find you um, and where they can um, uh, get in touch with you if they would like a amazing mask or an amazing um, uh, thermos, coffee cup, a- a- anything else. Tumblr. Tumblr. Thank you. They. Um, uh, the. That's why I have him here because he remembers things that I don't. Um, uh, the. Uh, so go ahead and look directly in the camera and let the good people know where they where they can find you. Uh, you can find us at www.nightterrorstudio.com or on any of the social media platforms under Night Terror Studio or on Slasher at Oh My Guts. I mean, we are. Night Terror Studio is on Slasher. but Very nice. But they can find you on either one. So, cool. Thank you so much. And thank you all of you for checking out the Nightmares podcast. Uh, you can find us uh, wherever podcasts can be found. And if you are watching us on YouTube, if you can be so awesome to stab that like button, smash that subscribe, and click that little dingy bell to be notified every time we drop amazing content. Uh, for all of our social medias, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Slasher. The application for all things horror. Thank you so much for checking this uh, uh, this podcast out. We will see you next time on the Nightmares Podcast. Bye, guys.